in ACI, traffic is not allowed by default. In ACI, you configure layer two domains that are called bridge domains. And each bridge domain can be divided into multiple security zones, like in this example, EPG1, EPG2, EPG3. This could be security zones on the same bridge domain, or it could be some EPGs on one bridge domain and some EPGs on another bridge domain. But for servers in a given EPG to talk to servers in a different EPG, you need to have what ACI defines as a contract, which you can think of as an ACL in a classic uh, an XOS device. Endpoint groups are security zones that could include both virtual machines and physical servers. And they appear on a virtualized host, as you can see here on the right. They appear as port groups to which you can attach virtual machines. If virtual machines or physical hosts are in the same endpoint group, they can talk without the need for any contracts. If they are in different endpoint groups, you need to have what is called a contract to allow the communication between the endpoint groups. Endpoint groups can be segmented further by creating what are called micro-segmented EPGs, which are more granular EPGs where traffic is assigned to them based on MAC address, IP address, VM tags, and so on. And even though the default for an EPG is to allow all the traffic, you could also create EPGs where traffic is not allowed, and these are called isolated EPGs. If you're familiar with prior VLANs, this is very similar to the concept of prior VLANs. So what is a contract? A contract is like an ACL. The difference is that it's not based on defining IP addresses, but it's based on defining a pair of security zones and defining which protocol and which ports are allowed to uh, communicate. There is a provider configuration. So one EPG is a provider of the contract and there is a consumer configuration. So each EPG can consume one or more contracts. Within each contract, you can define with a filter, you can define the protocol and the ports that are allowed. Traffic can be permitted. This is the normal configuration, but you could also have rules to drop traffic, or you could also have a configuration that it's not permitting traffic, but it's redirecting it, for instance, to a layer four, layer seven device like a firewall. What defines which traffic is allowed are the filters. Here, you see an example from the UI where there is this contract called allow HTTP. And this is using a filter called HTTP. Uh, and in the filter, you can see that the user, the administrator defined the ether type, the layer four protocol, and the source and destination layer four port ranges. There are more options that you can configure, um, such as you can match on the TCP flags, for instance. You can also define this um, as a filter for layer two traffic if you want. The contract filter actions, as we said, is a permit, a deny, or it can also be a redirect, but you can also combine permit and deny with the log. So this is helpful for troubleshooting, for instance. Um, so you just need to, next to the filter, you need to define the directive log. And so the traffic that is hitting a rule with the log enabled can be seen by going directly to the leaf where the traffic is uh, traversing that leaf. Or you could see an aggregated view. Under the tenant view, you can see traffic from any leaf being displayed in the tenant view. And in the tenant view, you can further see traffic categorized in two different views. The per packet view, where you see packet by packet traffic and is hitting rules. Or you have a more organized view where traffic is organized per flow. And so there you can see the hit count of a given flow, which is measuring how many locked packets are belonging to a given flow. Uh, it's not a, a measure of how much traffic is flowing per se, because it's based on the log packets. Now, 
we said that you can do permit, you can do deny with a contract, and we mentioned also redirect. So redirect is something you can configure by combining a service graph with a contract. In this example, you see PG1 and PG2 on different bridge domains. And the configuration here means consists in redirecting traffic that needs to traverse from EPG1 to EPG2 uh, to redirect it through a firewall instead. And this can be based on the entirety of the traffic, or it could be specific uh, protocols, specific ports. And the traffic can be from EPG of the same bridge domain, from EPGs of different bridge domains, or you could even redirect traffic that belongs to the same endpoint group. Traffic filtering or redirection can be done at different levels, meaning you could have configurations that apply to traffic between different BRFs. And so this is a combination of the um, filtering rules and also route leaking. Or you can say that you want to apply a given security rule to all the traffic of a given VRF, and that's done with a configuration that's called VZNE, which represents all the EPGs of a given VRF. Or you could have a configuration where some EPGs can talk freely and the other ones require the contracts. And this is called preferred groups, or I should rather say preferred group because there's one per VRF. Or you could have a regular EPG to EPG filtering configuration. This is done with the normal contract configuration. Or you could also have a configuration with micro-segmented EPGs. So you could configure contracts between micro-segmented EPGs. Or you could see also, you can also configure traffic filtering within an EPG. Okay. Or you could even have no traffic allowed within an EPG at all within try PG isolation. Mm -hmm.